And if you get the uncured bacon at the store that says nitrate free, that's not, it's not, that's not actually true. That's just a strange labeling thing. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that the bacon, it has, they, they use something else. They used a so-called natural source of nitrate, which is um, celery juice powder. And only recently have they been able to measure the quantity of nitrate in celery juice powder. Mm. Um, it's a highly processed thing. It's not just celery seed. That's a spice, you know. Yeah. That's not mm. what it is. It's highly processed because there are nitrates in celery. And um, so it's, it, it is possible that the uncured bacon in the store, the nitrate-free bacon, has more nitrites in it. Oh than the standard bacon yeah so um i think it is normal and actually nay required to put nitrite in bacon mm -hmm. and nitrite is is what nitrate will reduce to under the proper conditions mm. um so one thing it, it helps to note is the difference between nitrate and nitrite and it wasn't until the 1930s that we could even add nitrite to anything mm -hmm. because we couldn't make it. And I think it was the 1930s they figured out how to isolate it in a lab, you know, mm. and, and then mass produce it. And, and now anytime you buy it, it's made in a lab. Same with sodium nitrate. It's made in a lab. Huh. There was a day when I think in like uh, in Chile, they there were saltpeter mines and these were veins in like this arid desert climate where they would mine saltpeter. And saltpeter is potassium nitrate. And that is all that the bacon curers had available to them. And there is actually quite a long history of, like we have tapestries from the 13th century of people harvesting saltpeter from caves. Wow. So it's very old. Um, and it's, its use in bacon is very old. Um, and what it does is you would use it in very tiny amounts and it, so it's a, just a micro fraction of your cure, of your dry rub, mm -hmm. saltpeter, potassium nitrate. And it is completely inert and like it does nothing unless it's reduced to nitrite in the meat. Mm -hmm. So today we don't have to go through that because we can synthetically produce nitrite. Right. And so usually, especially in the case of bacon, it's just easier to add nitrite. Yeah, because the, the process of getting the saltpeter to turn into the nitrite is laborious. It's laborious. And... It requires... Yeah. skill it's kind of cool <laughs> and so the old bacon cures like they were the, there's a few things that convert nitrate to nitrite okay. and they are anathematized in modern food production systems okay and they are three okay staphylococcus and micrococcus bacteria wow and warm temperatures uh. so when you would salt your bacon with saltpeter and and mostly sea salt um you had, after the curing process, you had to hang it in a warm environment. Mm. So above 41 degrees Fahrenheit or mm. 42. So above refrigeration. Uh -huh. And it had to have bacteria present to help convert the, the nitrate to nitrite or mm -hmm. to reduce it to nitrite because the bacteria acts as a catalyst for that reaction. And there had to be lots of pigment in the flesh of the pig. So mm. that's... We're going to say three. It's warm temperatures, bacteria, and pigment or myoglobin in the flesh. So healthy pork. A healthy pig. And a, maybe uh, most definitely uh, scalded and scraped. Exactly. Because the skin has that bacteria yeah. on it. So right. to convert nitrate to nitrite, you got to scald and scrape your pig yeah. because all the bacteria is on that skin. Yeah. And as just drawing your knife through the flesh, you're inoculating it with staphylococcus and micrococcus bacteria. And then you apply the saltpeter to that and put it in a warm climate. And then the butcher's job was to conscientiously and expertly nurse the nitrate into nitrite. Hmm. He had to actually cure it, which means to mm -hmm. care. To care. Curare yeah. from the Latin. And, and you could deduce your progress. Because when you slice the bacon, you could see how far the nitrite has penetrated because of its reaction with the myoglobin. Mm. You could see how pink it was. Mm -hmm. And so that is, that is not an easy thing. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, 
And we, we don't do that anymore because we need yeah. to make bacon it real takes fast. Too much time, and yeah. so today, bellies fresh off the pig come down a belt and they are stitch pumped, which is the maximum number of needles that can be injected into a pork belly without disintegrating it. Because oh. that's how far they need to go. Oh my gosh. They, they inject um, uh, brine into it. Yes. And it's nitrite. So uh -huh. it really requires like no conversion. And here's the thing about nitrite. All your curing can happen in refrigeration, okay. mm -hmm. which everybody likes mm -hmm. um, because that's not where bacteria can really proliferate yeah. quickly under those temperatures. Yeah. So it's, it's more, again, it's just seasoned. It's a, it acquires the briny acid, tangy, sourly, bacony flavor that we have passively come to associate with the mm -hmm. flavor of bacon. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not and, it, and it'll do it in it's just preserved. a couple hours. Really? Yeah. yeah. And the, if anything, the wow. smoking will take a little while, you know, uh -huh. and if they smoke with mm -hmm. smoke at all, which it's mm -hmm. usually just liquid smoke, mm -hmm. which is gross. But it's also, um, they do need to track the progress of the nitrite throughout. Well, yeah, especially if they're doing something, they are creating micro incisions in the meat now. That's actually... Puncture wounds. Right. That's a little bit unsafe compared to, uh, you know, keeping it all one flat muscle like how we do it. That's interesting. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, it's safe because of the nitrite. Right. So that keeps the pH low. Right. But puncture wounds, that's how you get tetanus. Yeah. Which is clostridium tetanoterotorum. <laughs> I don't know okay. how to say it, but yeah. it's a clostridium bacteria. Okay. And the reason puncture wounds from rusty yeah. nails are not so good is because puncture wounds create an anaerobic environment. Yeah. Rather than just like a cut or a gash. Right. It creates a hole and then covers up the hole. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So it's safe, but only because they, they first created a problem that then they had to be remedied by an artificial With the nitrite. Band -aid. Yeah. And the nitrite just keeps the pH super low. Yeah. And why why use saltpeter in the first place? Even if you're going to do that cool, you know, traditional method and nurse it into nitrite. And I think that makes a much more gentle bacon. Mm -hmm. um, it has the capacity to. Because anytime you add the sourly tang of acid to the salt and fat combination, um, that's like, the, that's really good. That's mm -hmm. the triumvirate. Yeah. That's, that's like when for. Marcus Aurelius, no, Mark Antony joined um brutus and cassius yes um it's really it's really the persuasive stuff and uh -huh. it mellows things out and uh, allows you to get closer to caesar but it's mm -hmm. um yeah it's the tanginess mm -hmm. it helps you eat more salt and fat uh -huh. <laughs> it's like sauerkraut and sausage right? yeah so that's yeah. the cool thing about salt peter yeah and i, I think people should mm -hmm figure it out mm -hmm. i've done it a few times and it totally works mm -hmm. like once i did it once <laughs> yeah. yeah i remember trying it and it was enjoyable yeah 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 mm -hmm.